So all the gyms are shut and you've got to stay inside. What do you do? Well, if you are worried about losing all your gains because you can't go to the gym, keep watching because I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about losing your gains, what happens when you stop training. I'm going to talk about strength, hypertrophy, so muscle building, uh, what you can and can't do at home. And I'm going to talk a bit about diet as well. So if that interests you, keep watching. First of all, stop in training because your gym is closed. Well, if you've been training consistently for a period of time, multiple weeks, and you've not taken a deload, well, a deload is a good idea. So usually a deload means you reduce the weights that you're lifting, you reduce the volume of lifting that you're doing, so you do fewer sets for about a week. And then you get back to training as normal. Now, on a deload, if you literally do no training, rather than going in and doing that lighter training, the difference is minimal when you get back to training. So, you can have a deload for a start. What about if you don't train for longer than that, so two, three weeks? Yeah, you're going to lose some gains. You're going to lose a bit of strength, maybe a little bit of muscle. The thing is, after you've built those gains once, if you lose them, when you try and gain them again, you gain them really quick. It comes back way quicker than it did the first time. There's a kind of muscle memory effect, particularly in muscle building. So if you literally do no training at all for two, three, maybe even four weeks, when you get back to training, a couple of weeks in, you'll be back to where you were. After that, you'll be better than ever. So basically, don't worry about it. If you literally don't train in the next few weeks because your gym's shut, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. There are way more important things going on at the moment. If you do want to train after you've had a deload or you don't need a deload, you want to carry on your training at home, what can you do? Well, if you are training for strength in the gym, the thing about strength is it's specific. So it's specific for the exercise that you're doing, specific for the weight moved, the speed of movement, etc. Very specific. So are you going to lose strength when your gym is closed? Well, yeah, if you measure strength as in the amount of weight you can lift on an exercise. So if you're not squatting, you're not benching at home, then your squat and your bench are going to go down. You're going to lose strength. The other thing about strength is the primary driver of strength is that amount of weight lifted. It's the intensity of the exercise. Intensity, in this case, as like the percentage of your one rep max. How close to a max is it? If you have not got enough weight at home to lift at a high intensity, a high weight, then you're not going to be able to effectively train for strength. What can you do at home, though? Well, if you've got lighter weights, you can do higher rep sets. You can, so you can still do some hypertrophy training, muscle building, or at least muscle maintenance. In this time where your gym's closed, it'd probably be a smart idea to change your mindset from trying to make new gains to maintenance. So you're just maintaining what you've got at the moment, taking a bit of a break, and then you're going to hit training hard again when you can get back into the gym. However, for hypertrophy training, the driver of hypertrophy is the volume of training that you're doing. So the number of hard sets that you are doing per session and per week. As long as you can get in plenty of hard sets per week, you can build muscle or at least maintain muscle. How can you do this? What's a hard set? Well, it's a really wide range. So anything from 5 to 30 reps in a set can be a hard set as long as it's fairly close to failure so closer than four reps to failure what we would call four reps in reserve RER so you can go four three two one reps away from failure or all the way to failure there's lots of research looking at 30% of your max which is a very light weight and training with sets of that and have shown that you can still build muscle mass using 30% of your max 30% of your max works out to sets of about 50 reps. So all the way up to 50 reps, you can still build muscle. They can still be effective sets. With the caveat that they need to be quite close to failure. So we're talking one or two reps away from failure. So you would either leave one or two reps in the tank or go all the way to failure with higher rep sets. So that means what can we put these pieces together to make a program? Well, anything we can do at home that gets us between 5 and 50 reps, big range, within 2 reps of failure is an effective set. So there's loads of things we can do at home 
to achieve that. Body weight stuff for high reps. We can load movements. If you've got dumbbells or an adjustable dumbbell, that'd be great, or a small dumbbell set. Or kettlebells. You can load those movements to get them lower in the rep range, down into the less than 30 rep range would be brilliant. Failing that, any kind of makeshift weights, so heavy bags, suitcases, pets, relatives and loved ones, all work as makeshift weights. Failing that, bands would be great. You can load those for all sorts of bodyweight movements to add resistance. Failing that, how can you make these exercises harder? So just body weight or with this resistance, how can you make them harder to get them into the lower rep ranges while you can slow down the eccentric, so lowering slowly, doing tempos, putting your body in more difficult position. So to deficits, I always talk about full range of motion. So the simple push-up, you can do push-ups on the floor. Maybe you can do a set of 40. Maybe to make that harder, you can do a deficit, so put a couple of books under your hands, go all the way down, chest to in between the books, see how many you can do then. Then maybe it's 20. Try close grip, wide grip, then you can start loading it. Bands between your hands over your back, you can load a press up like that, or weights on your back, whatever you wanna do. This applies to all kinds of movements uh, that you can do with body weight, you can load in all kinds of ways and make harder. Other ways to make these harder, so supersets, so do multiple exercises for the same muscle group, they'll fatigue and uh, you'll get closer to failure. Myo reps are a good option if you look up myo reps, so you do one high rep set very close to failure and then have a short rest, 30 seconds and then go again close to failure. On the first set you might get like 30 reps, after that you might get 15, 12, 10, something like that because you're already fatigued. So that's a great way to get in plenty of volume in a short space of time with a lighter load. Final way to use a lighter load is BFR training, so blood flow restriction training, uh, also called occlusion training. For an advanced trainee, you know your body, this is a pretty safe thing to do. You just put on a fairly light band, uh, like a light tourniquet uh, around your extremities, so high on the arm or the leg, and you can do isolation work for biceps, triceps, quads and hamstrings allows you to use a much lighter weight for the same amount of reps to hit failure so that can be very useful when you can't load these movements as you normally would why can you get away with doing higher rep sets for hypertrophy with lighter weights why does it need to be closer to failure so very quickly it comes down to what's called the size principle of motor unit recruitment which sounds complicated all it means is all your muscle fibers are grouped into motor units. When you lift a heavy weight, you need to use all of those muscle fibers, or at least most of those muscle fibers, to lift that weight. If you're doing something that you can only do for three, four, five reps, you need to use all those um, muscle fibers straight away. So within a couple of reps, you've recruited all those motor units to lift that weight. When it's a lighter weight, you only need a small proportion of those muscle fibers, so only a few motor units are recruited, the smallest ones first, that's why it's called the size principle. As you fatigue, you do more and more reps, they recruit more and more and more of those motor units until you're approaching failure, it will have recruited all of those motor units using all of those muscle fibers. So, higher reps with lighter weights, you need to be pushing closer to failure, one or two reps away from failure at least, if not all the way to failure with those light weights. How should you arrange this training? Well, if you, um, so training with lighter weights, body weight, etc., it can be more difficult to get that hypertrophic stimulus. A good way to arrange your training would be to do a higher frequency of training. So if you usually train three or four times a week, maybe during this time you could train six days a week, hitting each muscle group more often per week, but with less stimulus each time. Fun thing is, if you're not traveling to the gym, it's right there in your room, in your house, in your back garden, then um, you can afford to train more often. It's less out of your way. It'll be quicker sessions, etc. On that note, probably a good idea to do full body kind of training because you're not presenting the magnitude of stimulus that you usually are. So hitting everything all the time, um, multiple times a week, high frequency would be a f an effective way to train during this time. 
So what we do in this hypertrophy work, light weights, higher rep sets, close to failure, what's happening to our strength? Well, it's going to go down because you're not doing the strength work that you're normally doing. Especially, as I said, strength is specific. So if you're not doing the exercises you normally do, when you get back to them, you're not going to be able to lift as much. The nice thing is, that's temporary. Those gains come back really quick. So when you get back to normal training, it'll come back very quickly. A couple of weeks, you'll be right back to where you were, better than ever. If you can effectively train for hypertrophy during this time, though, if you can at least maintain or build muscle, a bigger muscle has more potential to be stronger. So if you can build some muscle when you get back to your strength training, soon after that, you'll be stronger than ever. So this is not wasted time. So diet, diet meaning either losing or gaining weight either way. Let's talk about losing weight first. So when you're losing weight with diet, the goal of your training is to maintain as much muscle mass as possible. That means any weight that you lose will then be fat. If you're gaining weight, the goal of your training is to make sure as much of that weight gained as possible is muscle mass and not fat. What does that mean? You have to do hypertrophy training. So you have to do high volume muscle building training during those times. If you cannot effectively do that training during this time, then it's probably not a good idea to be either losing or gaining weight. The other thing with losing weight is if you're stuck inside, can't go very far, can't be as active as you usually are, steps going to be lower, etc. Then your calorie requirements are much lower. So trying to lose weight during this time means you'll have to have a much lower daily calorie intake. So it might be more difficult for you. The other thing is people stuck inside will get bored. It's easy to eat out of boredom and out of habit uh, while you're stuck inside and you've got nothing to do. And there's the temptation of the food and snacks in the house and stuff. That's a bit of a double whammy of difficulty for dieting. Now, if those things don't apply to you so you can train effectively, you uh, keeping your activity up and your diet is not more difficult when you're stuck in the house, then by all means, um, crack on with that diet. For me, I find it easier to diet when I'm kind of at home um, and I can set my own routine, eat when I want, not tempted by eating out uh, with friends, etc. So that could work for me. Um, However, some things to think about there. Uh, it might not be the right time to diet, particularly gaining weight where you're not doing the effective training. Probably not a good idea. Maybe not a good idea to be trying to lose weight, lose fat either. So I'm just going to go through a few muscle groups and all the options to give you an idea of how much stuff you can do at home. Quads. Right, you can do all kinds of split squats, split spot, split squats with your feet elevated to the rear, lunges, um, sissy squats are great, goblet squats, particularly with your heels elevated to hit the quads more, uh, Cossack squats, all great quad stuff. Hamstrings, so RDLs or single leg RDLs, like I said, so you can use a lighter weight. You can do hamstring curls, on a Swiss ball or just an elevated surface or hamstring curls with floor sliders or a cloth on a uh, hard surface or a piece of paper on a carpet all works for hamstring curls. You could do some kind of good mornings as well uh, with some kind of makeshift weight. Glutes, all kinds of hip thrusts and frog pumps. You can do hip thrusts or glute bridges uh, with a single leg as well in order to use less weight. You can also load those with bands. Um, the bands between your knees, like the glute bands, all the usual stuff you can do with them, you can do at home as well. Uh, upper body stuff, so chest. You can do any kind of pressing with whatever weight you've got. Floor press, just like you would a bench press laid on the floor. And you can do those single arm as well. Any kind of flies with, with whatever weight you've got, you can do. Um, press ups, as I've said before, great exercise. You can do wide grip, close grip to a deficit, feet elevated, etc. For shoulders as well, so uh, continuing from push ups, press ups, you can do a pike push up. So you put your feet on an elevated surface, bed, chair, whatever it is, pike your bum into the air. So you are head down towards the floor. And press up like that for your shoulders like an overhead press. 
from that you can progress to a handstand press up so kick your legs up against the wall do a handstand press up both of these things you can do to a deficit so if you put some books or boxes under your hands to give you room for your head you'll get a better range of motion uh, any kind of overhead pressing you can do with dumbbells kettlebells makeshift weights also for the delts side and rear delts you can do any kind of lat raises rear delt flies face pulls uh, with whatever weight you've got or bands for all those things as well back and biceps starts to get a little bit more difficult at home because you can't load those very well with your body weight some body weight stuff that you can do if you can get underneath your stairs or a table you can do a kind of inverted row against those if you've got a trx loads of stuff you can do pulling wise with those as well a makeshift replacement for a trx is get a bed sheet tie a big knot in one corner stick that knot through the top of a door slam the door towards you make sure you're pulling the way the door shuts because if you pull it the other way the door can fly open and you fall on your back you've then got the sheet sticking out the top of the door you can grab onto that lean back do all kinds of rows and you can do bicep curl towards that as well if you do have some weights you can do all kinds of dumbbell row bent over dumbbell row uh, for your back and uh, bicep curls with dumbbells of all kinds as well loads of options there if you have to have a pull-up bar, either freestanding or in a door frame, you can do your normal pull-ups, wide grip, underhand, etc. Finally, calves. Well, you can do any kind of calf raise you like on a kind of elevated surface, some books or a box. If you switch to single leg and you slow it down, you do a big pause at the top and the bottom, full range of motion, and you get a good calf stimulus there. So, I think that's uh, pretty much everything loads of options there for exercises endless amount of stuff you can do at home follow these principles make sure you're doing hard sets close to failure in whatever rep range you can effectively load and you'll get good results at home I've made a flexible at home program which I've got templates for just body weight or just a dumbbell or makeshift weight and I'm going to make that available to everybody uh, and we've got a uh, there's a link on there to a video explanation talking you through through the whole thing and I hope this will help a lot of people who are having to train at home during this time if you have got any issues any questions about at home training any worries uh, or you've got some random bits of kit at home and you're not sure what to do with them ping me a DM, I'll be happy to chat to you and hopefully help you get to some kind of solution. Good luck guys, stay safe and I'll talk to you soon. Heavy bags, suitcases, pets, relatives and loved ones, all workers makeshift weights. The arsonist had oddly shaped feet. The human torch was denied a bank loan.